Hi all, welcome to another video on my channel where we decode and make things easier for everyone. So this is one of the most requested video on Apache Spark. I got so many requests to make this video. In this video, we'll understand how to tackle skew data in Spark like a pro. This video will help you gain understanding on skew data problems in Spark and you'll know how to fix this with a real world example. So if you're excited to watch this video, then stay tuned. So agenda for this video. First, we'll see like what is skewness. We'll see like why we should worry about skew data in Spark. We'll see like what are the different ways to handle skew data. Then we'll see one of the most interesting and one of the most effective technique called as salting technique. We'll have a code walkthrough on it, right? Then we'll see what are the benefits and drawbacks of salting technique. So let's first understand what is skewness, right? So this is a very formal explanation, definition for skewness. So skewness refers to the uneven distribution of data across partition in spark cluster right so when data is skewed some partition can have significantly more data than others leading to performance issues and slower processing times right so if you know about spark like spark distributes the data in terms of partitions right so sometimes if there is a skew some partition can have more data than others so that is what called as skewness. So this is one of the example that you can see. So if you see that uh, we have like number of rows of data on the y-axis and these are like some of the, uh, you can see some of the columns you have, right? Uh, some of the partitions. You have. So if you see this is even distribution. So you have even distribution across partitions. But this is, this is ideal situation but this does not happen in real time, right? So, and if you see this is, this is skewed data, right? So if you see there are uneven partitions across it. So this is a lot more records are there and in this partition there are very less, right? So this is called as skewed data. So we'll see like what are the issues that you face with skewed data. So let's see like why to worry about skewed data. So I think as a data engineer, this two images is one of the most scariest when you build data pipeline, right? So if you see in the first uh, image, you could see that there are 200 tasks are there and 199 tasks is almost done, right? Almost not done, it's already done. And there is one task is running, right? And maybe it could be running for 21 minutes. And if you see the Spark UI, you will see like some tasks are getting completed very quickly. Some tasks is taking longer and some tasks are like taking a long time, right? So whenever you see something like this in Spark UI, you can get a hint that there is skewness in that. So this is from here, you can, you can go about your debugging of your Spark job. So why to worry about skew data? Performance degradation, right? So whenever data is skewed, some partitions may have much more data than others, right? So that caused those partition to take longer to process. So this can lead to slow processing times and performance degradation of his Spark jobs. You can get out of memory issue with this, right? So what happens when some partitions have significantly more data than others? It can lead to out of memory errors on the executor nodes, right? So this happens when a single executor nodes needs to store all the data from a skew partition, leading to insufficient memory, right? So suppose one partition has a like 10 million records, right? So there will be one task that will be working on that. So what happens is one, one task has to get all the data into the memory, right? Due to which the, you might get out of memory errors, data shuffling, right? So whenever there is a data skewed across your data set, right? What happens is it can cause an uneven amount of data to be shuffled across the network, right? Leading to network congestion and slower processing time. Let's see what are the different ways to handle skewed data. One, 
this is the most simplest approach you can isolate skew data so whenever you uh, you have identified that our data is skewed so you can only take non skewed data but this is this is something that's not possible in all the times right so let's see what are the different ways so there is one more way that is called as broadcast hash join right so skew data means suppose whenever you are doing some join between two table right if there is skew between between those tables right your join might take a lot of time to fix this what you can do is like you can broadcast one one of the table right what it does it it just copies your data to all the executors so the even there is, there is a skew there won't be any shuffling around right so this can fix your skew data issue but not every time you can broadcast it right so if you have a huge two huge tables you won't be able to broadcast it even if you do it will be very slow and there will be performance error, right one more thing that you can repartition the data right so whenever you are seeing that we i have a data skew on one of the columns so what you can do is you can repartition with using some other column right but this is also not practical in all the situation there there might happen that you do not get any columns which are like properly distributed right even if you repartition with some other column you might get skewed data again right then there comes a sorting technique so we'll be discussing in detail about the sorting technique which is very helpful to handle skewed data so let's get started with sorting technique so sorting technique is a way to handle skew data by adding a random prefix to the key for each record so what it does is this spreads the skew data across multiple partition reducing the load on any one partition right so the random prefix is called a sort and it is added to the key using a hashing function so the general idea of sorting technique is to distribute your keys right so if you do not have a even distribution of the keys basically what you do is you add some salt to the keys what it does it it tries to distribute your data right even if it is not able to do uh, like evenly it will try to spread spread in a way that you get more parallelism so uh, generally this is where we are creating a skew data so we are creating two data frame if you see that we are creating a highly skewed data frame with 100 million rows where 99% of the rows have the same key value right so if you see 99% are like same value and only 1% of value is having different so it's a very highly skewed right so that we are doing and we are creating one more data frame with two column right and this is just a uh, testing sample that we are creating to just to show like how it works right so see we have just created this two data frame this is the df skewed data frame which has some id and some keys and most of the keys are one there will be very few like one, only one percent of the values which will be zero right and this is id is nothing but this is just an incremented value this is just a test data and we have one more table of key size of zero which is small one that is large so what we'll be doing is we'll be joining this two data frame and we'll see like how this skew data affects the performance right now let's first see like how to identify data skew right this is very simple so suppose you uh, suppose here basically if you see that key on the basis of key we can join this two table right so one will be matching as large and zero will be small right so what you do is like you just group the data by key and you do a count so if you see that uh, as i talked about like 99 percent will be like one so this is like 99 million records are one and only close to one million is zero so this is highly skewed so let's see let's try to join this two data frame with key and select the id and size so id is coming from left side table size is coming from right side table right so let's see how much time it is taking so i previously i have already ran this so this took around 20.63 seconds right but as you know there is a skew data issue is there so let's try to use salty technique and let's see like how much performance boost we are getting right 
So basically to do this, currently we are just registering this as temporary view just to use SQL on top of it, which will make this example a little easier to read, right? So basically we are registering as a df skew and df small, right? So if you remember the definition of salting that whenever there is a skew on some particular key, right, we add some random values there. Right. So basically, if you see that we are adding some random values, right, random values to the key separated by this, right. So this is how we are creating the skew data frame. So if I show you this, so if you see that we have added some random values from 0 to 15, right, 0 to 19, sorry. So this is how we are creating. So we are just adding some random values. So if you see uh, 15 is added, 9 is added, 1 is added, 8 is similar. Now on the second data frame, what we do is we use the columns from the table and we explode it with the number of times we have added the salt, right? So if you see that we have added random values for 20, like 0 to 90, right? Similarly, we're exploding this, this particular columns 19 times sorry 20 times right I, I i'll tell you like why we're doing the exploding but for now just just understand that we have to explode this thing once you do that this is how your data will look like so if you see that you have a zero you have a side and you have a salted key right now what you can do is you can do the joining between these two data frame so basically i'm joining the skew i'm naming this as a fact then i'm doing a left join with exploded df with damage i'm making this as a dimension and what keys we need to use right now we will not be using the natural key right whatever key that is coming we'll be using the salted key right so we're using the salted key from here but if you see on the right side table it's not it's not similar to this right so what we need to do is we need to concatenate this key with salted key right that's what we are doing so this is just to prepare the right side salted key so once you run this you will see that it is getting executed in 1.80 seconds so if you remember previously it took like 20 seconds now it's able to do it in one second right so Previously, I've just ran it. Previously, it took like 20 seconds for the first one and new time was 1.29 seconds. So you can just see the scale of the improvement that we get. We got like 93.8% improvement in performance, which is significant improvement, right? So if you see that with this just few lines of the code, right? First, we added some salt on the skew data. Then we just exploded the data just by doing this, you're able to get this huge performance improvement, right? Just think that this is just a sample data we're working with. Just think about the real time data that you get that has a lots of column and you're doing joining and there's a skew data. Just think about how much a performance improvement you will get. So if you remember, I've talked about like why we're exploding this, right? Let me explain this with use of one Excel sheet. Just think that this is a table one this is the table two we have right so let's see like what we'll try to do is it will try to add salt on both keys right so let's do that so what we are doing is on the key we are adding some salt from 0 to 5 we have added similarly here from 0 to 1 we have added because there are only two now let's see like if we if we are able to join this so if you see only this particular column is matching, right? But these are not matching because it is one zero. There is no one zero salted keys there. Similarly for this, there are no matching records, but it should match, right? But why this did not match? Because we have added salted key. We have added some salt on the right side also, but which will not match with this table one, right? To fix this, what we do is, because here if you see on the left side, we have added salt from zero to five, right? Some random values. So let's do one thing. Let's explode this right side with five times value, right? Zero to five. I think that's a six time, right? So let's do that. So what we're doing is for the ones we are doing exploding, 
so it will be 1 0 to 1 5 similarly for 0 we are doing from 0 to 5 it will be 0 0 towards 0 5 now let's see if we'll able to join right then if you see that we're able to join all the ones and all the z zeros are also able to join right but in the process if you see these are all the extra rows that we have created which is which was not required before but this is one of the disadvantages of salt key uh, sorry of using salty technique that it increases your data size but if you if you see at the end of the day you are getting a a huge performance uh, benefit right so uh, what i feel is spark doesn't uh, doesn't have issue with uh, processing a lots of data but it faces issue whenever there is a lot of shuffling happens there's a lot of skew data so i feel like uh, duplicating the data is fine at this stage because we, we are doing a lot of uh, performance improvement right so with this let's see the benefits and drawbacks of salty tech so one of the benefits is like it's very simple and easy to implement as you have seen like just like adding two statements we are able to do the sorting and this can effectively handle skew data and improve performance so this can be combined with other techniques such as partitioning or bucketing for even better performance right so there are some drawbacks as well so this can add overhead to the application due to the additional processing required to add the sort. As you have seen that we are adding some extra rows to fix this issue, but that also adds a overhead on the Spark processing. Right? This can also increase the storage requirements of the data set. So if you see that, if I've seen in the Excel sheet that I've shared, there we are we have just increased the number of rows right which also increases the storage requirements so with this i'm done with this video so i hope that you have liked this video so if you like the video give it a like and share the video with your friends and let me know which topics in spark you would like me to cover in future and subscribe to my channel for more helpful content.